Hi, I'm Rado Meyer. I'm a developer advocate at Google, and I'm joined here today by the director of Android Wear, Dave Singleton. Hi, Dave. Thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Um, so you, uh, we heard all about the, some of the new features from uh, Android Wear at the keynote this morning. I was wondering if you could tell us what are some of the, the biggest highlights from your perspective? Yeah, so today's been really great. This is our second time as part of the keynote uh, at Google I.O. Um, last year, obviously, we um, announced that we were working on Android Wear and also the first couple of devices. Um, so what's been really great today is that we really gave an update. Um, and we also talked about some of the new capabilities um, of one of our latest uh, updates. So in terms of the update we gave, it's been really, it's been really great over the last year to see um, the diversity of uh, de designs and devices and applications coming out, um, which really gives uh, everyone who wants to use an Android Wear watch a lot of choice. Um, so when we, when we announced last year, we had two models, um, and we now have seven with some others uh, in the works. So it's really cool to have you know, lots of different shapes and sizes of, of watch available, um, and also apps. So uh, this time last year, we've been working with just a few folks that have been helping us you know, make sure we had the right APIs in place and that we were thinking about things the right way. Um, today, we were able to announce that we've got over 4,000 apps specifically designed for Android Wear. It's been really great to see how much uh, innovation developers have brought to the platform. I think it's really exciting. You know, this is kind of the first time that you can wear a general purpose computer on your wrist. Um, and by using the same tools and the same APIs that exist on Android for phones and tablets, I think that's pretty powerful for developers. At least that's what I thought before we launched. It was pretty powerful that folks could just kind of imagine what they wanted to do with the completely new form factor and hopefully do it really quickly. And it's, it's amazing just to see everything that's out there. So, um, some of what we talked about in the keynote today were some of the apps that we've seen that really get us excited because they take advantage of a lot of those capabilities. Um, one that I love is called Golf Swing Analyzer, and it uses the uh, accelerometer and the gyroscope in your watch to kind of track your swing. Um, it's actually really cool. So you, it, you, know, you start it, it says stand at the ball, and you start taking a swing. It realizes automatically that you've started to uh, you know, take your swing, and then it records the whole accelerometer gyro path, and then you can play it back on your phone to see you know, how well you're doing. Um, I'm pretty bad at golf, so. <laughs> Not for long, right? You've got well, tools hopefully, to hopefully that's the case. Um, so, you know, that, that's a, an example, but I think maybe something that folks watching this uh, might be most interested in are some of the new capabilities of the platform that we talked about on stage today and we've, we're just releasing in an update that's rolling out it's on some devices already and it's rolling out to the rest of the devices over the next few weeks. Um, and I think the most exciting feature is something we call always on apps. So it's been possible with Android Wear watches since the beginning to have an always-on display. So uh, it was either on by default or something you could enable so that you can always just glance down and look at the time. Um, and obviously, at the end of last year, we opened that up to developers because we published the APIs for watch faces. Um, yeah. And there are now over 1,500 watch faces, which is really cool because you can have like a designs that help express your style. But also, if you're an app developer who has some really interesting information that the user cares about, you can put that right on the watch face. So that's really cool. But um, what we have announced today is always on apps for regular apps. So you can take um, an application like Maps or City Mapper, things that are, you know, you, the user starts uh, the application and you know that they're still going to want to refer back to it. They're still kind of involved in this ongoing activity in the real world. Um, and you can actually make your app stay in the foreground even when the user drops their wrist and their device goes back into the, the low par ambient mode. Um, and we showed a bunch of examples on stage, but I think that's something that's going to be really exciting for, uh, for developers. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things you were saying this morning was that um, you, know, you can have full-blown apps effectively running on the, uh, on the watch device itself, um, which it seems like it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity for developers to create things which are more than just an extension of an app that runs on the phone, but something which is unique to this different form factor. Um, you know, when it comes to sort of the sensors and things that are on the device, do you think we've kind of hit a plateau in terms of the sorts of things we're going to find on devices, or is this something that you expect is going to continue to expand? Yeah, I, I definitely don't think we've hit a plateau. I think that, um, you know, when we started thinking about Android Wear and what we could do in this space, we realized that all technology that we were seeing in phones and tablets was on this amazing path of miniaturization. Um, 
and that really last year was the first time that you could put everything together into a package that was small enough and, and power efficient enough to wear on your body all day long and have it continue to work all day long. Um, and a lot of the sensors that are in today's devices obviously started in mobile phones where you know, they had to be low power and small. Um, but now that there's this kind of explosion in, in wearable devices, I think we're gonna see a lot more innovation in uh, the sensors that, that, that you would have here. Um, and I'm really excited by um, some, of the, some of the technology that you hear about in uh, research labs and in uh, you know, even computer science and engineering departments and universities around the world and how those will now start to become miniaturized and, and go into wearable devices. It's going to be cool. I think that's incredible. I mean, what do you think, you know, if you're a developer and you're out there and you're thinking, this is kind of interesting, what do you think are the, the biggest opportunities for someone who's thinking like, you know, maybe... I want to move past the smartphones. I want to move into something completely new. Um, you know, maybe this wearable thing is, is a thing. Like, what are the biggest opportunities you think for, for right. folks? So, I actually think that the the always on apps uh, functionality that we announced today is actually probably one of the biggest opportunities for developers in this space uh, to have come along anytime, merely since you know we started the platform. Because if you think about it, if you want to build a a special purpose wearable for a specific application. For instance, maybe you want to have um, a remote control that figures out which room of your house you're in and controls you know, your lighting or your TV or whatever. Um, that's a really great idea. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could build a dedicated wearable that, that does that? And you know, I think a couple of years ago, maybe even just a year ago, you would have had to hire a design team, an industrial design team, an electrical engineering team, or somehow find people that had all of those skills, and you'd have to probably do a, a Kickstarter, some kind of crowdfunding to get your initial seed capital, find manufacturing, um, go through multiple rounds of iteration just to produce the device so that you could bring that use case to life. But with Always On apps, you can take advantage of all of the uh, sensors and the, the fact that you have a general purpose compute platform here and have your application stay in the foreground the whole time while the user's engaged in that activity. Um, and so for that example I suggested, it would be possible to build a remote control application that maybe starts when you tap your watch as you enter your home and then just stays there all the time. And so you actually can turn your watch from uh, you know, a watch that you could go in and do very quick interactions on, which is still a very core part of the Android Wear experience, into a watch that when you want it to, can become this very special purpose device for as long as you need it to be. And for developers, I think that means you can go from the idea that these use cases are important, or this particular problem you want to solve is, is, is valuable, to a real, you know, fully fledged special purpose device really quickly. So I'm, I'm really excited about that, and I'm really excited to see what people are going to build on top of these APIs. Absolutely. It seems like there's a great opportunity to weave this wearable computing stuff into the Internet of Things things, which we heard about as well with Brillo and Weave. Right. Definitely very excited about that. Um, so, you know, a lot of what they've announced are making some of the, the processes of getting set up with uh, Internet of Things devices really seamless. And I'm excited about how watches and other kinds of form factors of wearable are going to be able to work with that over time. It's definitely going to be a great area to see people innovate in. Fantastic. All right, well, thank you so much for, uh, for coming and speaking with us. I, I feel like I have to ask you before you leave us, uh, what Android Wear watch are you wearing at the moment? So right now I'm wearing the Moto 360. This is the one that I was wearing um, on stage earlier. Um, we, I, I love the Moto 360. Um, in fact, you see the band here. This is a nice Horween leather band, but I've actually had it laser etched with a little Android of my own, which was a lot of fun. Um, the, the watch that we were doing the demos on on stage today is the LG Watch Urbane, which was the, the latest one to come to market. Um, and it's really great just to see the diversity of designs and styles. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Cool. Um, thank you. It's been great, great talking. Cheers.